classes. They were but with time, many, many changes occurred. Um, the bank on 135th Street, Lenox Terrace. Uh, we had also PS 197, plus the erection of Harlem Hospital. Uh, that helped to change the entire um, area. Also Delano Village, Riverbend, all of these um, developments changed the whole complexion of, of the neighborhood. As a kid coming up, you talk basketball and you think basketball, but you couldn't play basketball because the big guys was on the court. So there was an empty trash can and I used to practice constantly. Well, by the time I got to an actual basketball court, I realized I'd actually developed a shot. You learn how to dribble and you learn how to shoot. Didn't know much of the other parts of the game, but I could pretty much shoot. Tough learning the other parts of the game. That's where the Riverton came in. I had a lot of competition, future professionals, high school All-Americans. It was Dean Meminger, it was uh, Tito LaSalle, it was Charlie Yoverton, it was uh, Cal Ramsey. So coming to the Riverton and really hanging out was something to look forward to every day. It wasn't just a trip across the street. Uh, my name is Cal Ramsey. I currently work for the New York Knicks as a Goodwill Ambassador as well as New York University as a special consultant to the Director of Athletics. Uh, I was raised in Harlem. I went to high school, the High School of Commerce, where I was a second team All-American the same year that Will Chamberlain was first team All-American. From Commerce, I went to New York University, where I played for three years. I was NYU's captain. I set 17 scoring records for New York University. They've all been broken except for my rebounding records, which still stand. I averaged seven, 19.6 rebounds in my sophomore year, the same year that Will Chamberlain averaged 18 in Kansas. The ball went up, it belonged to me. Okay, you gotta take it from me. I don't care where it goes. I never, I never knew it was gonna go over here or go over there. I was gonna go get it, wherever it was. And that was my philosophy. You know, when the ball goes up, it belongs to me. And Satch and those guys, they would just box out and get out of the way because they knew I was coming for it. How did I come to the Riverton houses? Well, my mom was living in a, in a rental, in a tenement down on 111th Street, and I was about to go to play professional basketball at the St. Louis Hawks, and I wanted to find a nice place for her to live. So I went to Mr. Dolly King, whom I knew as a referee uh, in college basketball, and he used to allow me to come to play in the Riverton once in a while in the playground, and asked him to help me get an apartment in the Riverton so he recommended me to management and then I got a, an apartment there in 1959. I was teaching in the South Bronx, teaching typing in the South Bronx, which I did for six years. And during that time, I also got a job as the recreation director for the Riverton Houses, where I had the opportunity to work with some wonderful people, Mrs. Gates and Mrs. Bell, who had been there for a very long time. And I worked with them for several years in the Riverton and while there, I instituted a, a basketball tournament that a lot of people that you see around Riverton now played in. Yeah. And then Bootsy came along and he, he worked with me in the Riverton for a while. And what I recall is we had that tournament for about six years and we, we had kids who played who came from outside of Riverton to play. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't looked upon favorably, but we brought something in anyhow. And uh, we did it for a number of years. We never had any problems out there, as I recall. You know, one of, the, one of the reasons I did what I did was when I grew up in the Harlem community, I was fortunate to have guys like Rucker, <clears throat> Dolly King, Helen Fritz, and they all, you know, played a part in my development as a young person. So I kind of felt it incumbent upon myself to do what I could to help young people around the community. So when I was working with the playground, I tried to emulate the guys who came before me. And they were all very positive, they all, they all focused on education, they all focus on staying away from negative things. So I tried my best to impart those same values for young people in the Riverton when I was working over there. I, we allow kids to come in from all around the neighborhood because I remember when they tried to keep me out of the Riverton. So you know I couldn't do that. Keep kids out. It was there was there's so many of us that remember from other neighborhoods where the neighborhood 
uh, people who lived in the neighborhood were the guardians, you know. Well, they served that purpose, and 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 they, and they sent, served it very well because they lived there. They were they were uh, they knew everybody, and and so I mean, you know, one of them might say to, to my kids, you know, you know, you should do that, you know, and and they would the, the kid would re- react just just as as, as though I would tell him, you know, I mean, and and that that was immeasurably when it, when when it came from a parent's point of view, to to to, to have that kind of. Uh, 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 experience for your your children, so that they wouldn't go uh, in 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 areas that so many kids go now. You know, I mean. It, I can honestly say that I was truly blessed to be in that setting, um, and I was quite fortunate not only to grow up in the setting, but then once I married, I moved back, and I raised both of my children. Um, in Riverton. I came to feel that Metropolitan had been remiss, to say the least, in its treatment of blacks, not only from the standpoint of the housing, but from its earlier business practices and, and insurance. It reached the decision to integrate. It went all the way. It was sincere in it. And uh, I was glad to be a part of it. I I must say that uh, it bred something special. Uh, But I think it was also when it occurred because they were people of uh, common experience, common age, common ambitions, and in in the same place so that they grew together and there was a kind of adhesiveness and a commonality of, 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 of aspirations there.